In one of my previous videos, I did some response sweeps using a new and a used subwoofer driver. I did this because I wanted to check if there would be any difference between them and uh, to evaluate if I could use both of them in the monolith subwoofer build. Back then, no significant difference was observed. I also mentioned that to judge the change between the subwoofer drivers more precisely, I would need to measure small signal parameters myself to see the full picture. So I did that. Just to be clear, this video is not about measurement procedure itself and the best techniques how to obtain small signal parameters. There is a lot of information online that shows how to do this yourself. This video mainly focuses on adding another variable in the design process and uh, how it corresponds in bandpass subwoofer builds. After the measurements, I got some really interesting results, which I will discuss shortly. Really important thing to point out is that it turns out that to measure TS parameters, you do not need any fancy gear at all. All you need is an amplifier without any internal filtering, a uh, frequency generator. Uh, you also need a voltmeter, a uh, 10 ohm half a watt resistor some plasticine and some ordinary food scale. And that's it. You do not need to buy any fancy Dayton Audio DAT systems or anything. With some care and effort, you can get really precise measurements by yourself, just with uh, simple equipment. A great source of information was the uh, Elliott Sound Products webpage about measuring loudspeaker parameters. He gives a great explanation about the process and uh, guides you through the procedure. Also you can find a prepared spreadsheet where you can simply fill in the gaps and the calculation will be made for you. I really encourage you to go pay a visit to the webpage. Another great source of information is the uh, do-it-yourself reference monitor or DIYRM Facebook page where Scott Hinson uh, shares his knowledge about various topics, including uh, TS parameter measurement. Check out his uh, TS parameter measurement white paper for more information. To see the measurement process in action, you can check out Handlebar Workshops video, where he uses the Elliott Sound Products method to find the TS parameters for a driver with unknown factory data. All the mentioned links are down in the video description. For this presentation I will concentrate more on the measurement results and impl implications rather than the measurement process itself. Peter from YouTube channel Hexibase used some foam blocks to distance the driver from surface. He made sure that the pole vent is clear and that the cone is facing up. Scott from DIYRM places the driver rigidly on a extended support and it's sideways to reduce measurement error introduced with added mass method. My approach was to suspend the subwoofer driver in air to decouple it from any surface and keep the pole vent clear. Closest optical was more than half a meter away. The weight of the driver should be enough to consider the setup rigid enough for small signal measurements. The signal generator duty was done by the uh, room equalization wizard's built-in signal generator. The signal was amplified with a simple little OEM amplifier board. Uh, the little amp is rated at uh, 50 watts times 2 and uh, most importantly does not change or filter the output in any way. The sense resistor was a simple 10 ohm half watt component that was measured with multimeter. The equivalent air mass compliance value was measured with added mass method. To achieve at least 20% difference in driver's resonance frequency, I added 120 grams of extra weight that was measured with the simple kitchen scale. All the necessary measurements were entered in the calculation spreadsheet and uh, here are the results. The measurement between the used and the new driver revealed little to no change in TS parameters, which is in line with my previous video where I ran 
the response sweeps and saw no major difference. As it can be seen, the uh, FS difference was below 2% and the uh, QTS value also is quite similar. Some difference can be seen for QMS value as the used driver seems to be a bit stiffer, possibly due to added epoxy on the spider surround. Overall, I would say that the drivers act almost the same. Things get quite more interesting when comparing with the factory data. The major outlier is the moving mass result that shows over 20% bigger moving mass in real life measurement. Also, the compliance is much higher and uh, the equivalent air mass compliance was much lower. This has some serious implications when modeling the potential subwoofer designs, as I will explain later. The uh, FS and the QTS values match up quite good, which gives me some confidence in the measurement procedure. There are three main factors that can affect the results and introduce some errors. I do not know the measurement procedure of the manufacturer. Different driver placement or other setup factors could introduce some variables that I did not take into account. Important also is that the room temperature of the measurements was only 10 degrees Celsius. That can stiffen the surrounds and spiders causing higher compliance and tighter suspension. And lastly, added mass method to find the equivalent air compliance could be executed with some errors. It can be cross-checked using the uh, non-volume method. The main takeaway is that uh, both subwoofer drivers seem to be similar in small signal parameters and uh, indeed can be used in single box. After measuring the real-life small signal parameters, I tried to model the results for the single 15-inch bandpass subwoofer in uh, WinISD to see what happens. This is the box that I used previously for the frequency sweep comparison in real life. Several things can be seen here. Uh, so let's start with the fact that the predicted graph with the new driver TS parameters pretty much matches the used driver. This also was the case uh, with the real-life measurements that can be seen in uh, this graph. It is notable that uh, the uh, simulated overall output seems to be a little bit lower at the same input voltage. But to be fair, approximately 2 dBs is not that significant. Fun things can be seen in the next plot, where the con excursion graph shows some significant changes. At first look, one would think Oh cool, I have better cone control, how nice is that? But uh, this has a flip side. Remember that the input power is the same, so the uh, generated heat in coils has less cooling uh, than uh, one would hope when modeling using the factory data. Uh, this results in reduced power handling and uh, burnt coils. A solution would be to change the design entirely. Let's introduce simple venter design with the same internal volume as the bandpass box. The uh, vented box has higher cone movement which helps to cool the coils better, at the same time keeping similar sound pressure level at lower frequencies. Uh, downside is that the box loses quite a lot of output at higher frequencies, for this example from 50 Hz and above. Uh, this could compromise the sound quality of some more melodic and rock type tracks. In my experience when listening to some EDM or ordinary rock music on my uh, latest box builds at full volume, the bandpass subwoofer performs well, uh, it has a great dynamic range and has excellent bandwidth. Uh, the kick feels sharp, uh, low frequencies are prominent and overall experience is powerful and musical. Uh, but when the box is introduced with some car audio sine wave bass heavy songs at the same full volume The driver coil seems to get quite hot quite fast uh, More so when playing the uh, 50 Hertz and up, up songs This is mainly due to little excursion that turns out to be even smaller after the real-life TS parameter measurement 
This is true to all of my recent builds, uh, both the single and the double 15 inch subwoofer boxes, as the observed excursion at high input voltage seems to be quite low when judged by eye. This forces me to conclude that uh, for sixth order builds one should be extra careful uh, with the power that should be applied to the drivers. Although on paper you can get more output and more dbs out of your bandpass box, to get there you can damage the drivers. Depending on the intended use, some other box configuration could be desirable to ensure prolonged life of the components. This is a prime example that there always will be compromises in a speaker box design. I have some thoughts about the uh, observed non-linearity in the frequency response graph. In Scott's white paper about TS parameter measurements, I came across a graph that uh, shows how the parameters change quite fast when uh, applying anything more than a small signal. In essence, the parameters are not linear, which can cause some head scratching when comparing the real life results versus the model. Uh, this slide shows how this corresponds in my double 15 inch bandpass box. This was also seen in the single 15 inch uh, bandpass box. Pay attention to the horseback graphs to the left and the smooth roller coasters on the right. As I understand, the dips in port gain graphs are caused by the TS parameter non-linearity and it is a trait of the driver voice coils themselves. In some way, this separates the pro audio from car audio drivers, as the pro audio gear tends to have less of this uh, non-linearity. I might be mistaken, so feel free to correct me on this. After all of this, uh, there are several things that I learned along the way. Uh, so, the first conclusion is that uh, TS parameters can be measured quite easy. No fancy gear is needed, and anyone can do it with simple tools. Also, in my case, no significant difference between uh, the small parameters of a used and a new driver could be seen. But this uh, definitely can change from uh, driver to driver and from user to user, so your mileage can vary. To precisely model a desired subwoofer box, a manual TS parameter measurement can uh, greatly improve the prediction accuracy. Given the relative simplicity of the process, I would say that this step is a must. The precise small signal parameters can help choose the right box for the intended use uh, with more confidence. This helps you to get the most out of your audio gear and uh, ensures best listening experience. And uh, most importantly, there always will be compromises.